okay today we will discuss this very interesting topic called gravitation actually at the core of the topic is what is called the newton's law of gravitation this is the central theme in this topic in fact on learning this topic we will understand why moon goes around the earth why earth goes around the sun okay why they should keep going in circular or elliptical orbits what makes them go and we'll also understand some interesting things about circular motion so it is said that newton was sitting under an apple tree and an apple fell and he started thinking why this apple fell to the ground what made it bring it down onto the ground why did it not go up into the air so after very deep thought newton said any two objects in the universe any two objects please see this any two objects he doesn't put any restriction any two objects in universe attract each other attract each other with a force the only condition newton says is the objects should have mass so if there are two objects having mass then they attract each other which a force this force depends on product of both the masses so it's not one mass which is contributing to force both the masses contribute to force the force is proportional to proportional to 1 by d square where d is distance between objects d is distance between those objects so newton's law of gravitation is a very powerful law and newton is saying that any two objects it can be anything it may be stones it may be a pencil and an eraser it may be anything any two objects in the universe attract each other they are always attracting attract each other with a force okay this force depends on product of both the masses both the masses as in the product of masses of both the objects also the force depends on the distance square of distance the objects are very near the force will be more if the objects are very far the force will be less so in fact mathematically we can write it as f is proportional to m1 m2 by d square okay so two you have two masses m1 and m2 separated by a distance d so m1 is attracting m2 okay i will show it with a different color m1 is attracting m2 m2 is attracting m1 please note this both are attracting each other m1 exerts a force on m2 so there is a force on m2 f there is a force on m1 also that is also f both the forces are same in magnitude so the force depends on product of both the masses and it is inversely proportional to square of distance so you are dividing by distance is square so if distance is less denominator is less then force will be more if distance is more denominator will be more force will be less so any two objects it doesn't put any restriction that this should be earth this should be sun or this should be moon and this should be earth nothing like that any two objects for example this brings up a question if you have on the table one object let us say an eraser and a pencil a pencil then according to newton the eraser attracts the pencil okay and the pencil attracts the eraser so there is a force like this on the eraser there is a force like this on the pencil now this brings up a question why doesn't the rubber 
move towards the pencil that's the interesting question more interesting question why doesn't the rubber because there is a force on the eraser or the rubber due to the pencil why doesn't the eraser move towards the pencil so many people answer that there is mg so i'll show it here there is a force on the eraser due to the pencil this is due to pencil then there is mg the force with which earth is attracting the eraser so this is the eraser okay so they say because of this force the eraser doesn't move but it's not so this force is in a perpendicular direction to the force on the eraser when you have two perpendicular forces both are independent this force so if you want to counter the force due to pencil you must have a force in the opposite direction maybe in that direction not in the downward direction so one another answer which students say is there may be friction here between the eraser and the table so the pencil likes to pull the eraser towards itself but there is friction on the eraser but the, the, that is okay but uh, even if there is no friction still the eraser might be on the table there is possibility the, the real answer is we we have to go back to newton's law of gravitation and look at it more detail any two objects so eraser is being attracted by pencil agreed but you are standing somewhere here you are attracting eraser there may be a wall that is attracting eraser there may be a blackboard the blackboard which may be attracting the eraser the ground is attracting the eraser the table is attracting the eraser the fan on the top is attracting the eraser there are, it's not only just a pencil which is attracting eraser there are many other objects billions and zillions of dust particles everything air molecules all of them are attracting the eraser and somehow the sum of all these forces is zero sum of all these forces acting on eraser is zero so that that is a very crystal clear argument so eraser doesn't move because not only pencil the table the blackboard the person the roof the air molecules the walls everything is attracting the eraser so on the whole all these forces add up to zero on the other hand if i put this eraser and the pencil in space and i come back so there is now nothing except the eraser and the pencil no other object sun moon stars everything are very far away then of course the force on the eraser would be due to pencil the force on pencil due, would be due to eraser they start moving and coming closer now because there are no other objects exerting forces on this they keep coming closer one day they both touch each other okay but on earth there are many other objects which are attracting the pencil which are attracting the eraser so the total force on eraser will be zero the total force on the pencil will be zero so this this is a very important thing in newton's law of gravitation which we must understand so any object having mass will attract any other object having mass there is no restriction okay only it can be any object now i i i will i will show you something very interesting about this newton's law of gravitation suppose i have earth and there is a small tower on the earth okay from this tower i drop a ball the ball comes and hits the earth the ball is getting attracted towards the earth because of gravitational force of earth now the gravitational force of earth is very huge compared to the gravitational force due to yourself due to the tower due to the walls earth's gravity dominates the gravitational force of every other object so the object naturally falls towards the earth if i throw this with some speed it falls like this towards the earth if i throw it with more speed with the power of a superman it goes and falls somewhere here if i throw it with more speed it falls here if i throw it with more speed it goes there if i throw it with still more speed it falls there at a particular speed it comes back and keeps going around the earth so what is happening there is earth you have taken an object and you have thrown it with such a huge speed that it tries to fall towards the earth but by the time it takes curve earth also takes a curve it again takes a curve earth also takes a curve it again takes a curve earth also takes a curve earth also takes a curve like that so it comes back to that 
same point and it keeps going around and around so what is making it go in a circle the earth's gravitational force is making it go in a circle it takes a turn again earth pulls it 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 so it is making it go in circle because you have thrown it with such a huge speed if you would have thrown it with less speed it would have fallen somewhere here okay that is the idea so now you can understand why moon goes around and around the earth i i could put it this way there was earth and let us say there was moon and somebody gave a huge velocity to moon a huge speed you can say god okay if i have no better word so i will say god has given huge speed to moon so that it keeps going around 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 the earth okay the the point the point being if if earth was given a lesser speed uh, sorry if moon was given a lesser speed it would have one day collided with the earth then it would have been a disaster so the moon is continuously falling towards the earth continuously okay every day it is falling towards the earth but the moment it tries to fall earth also curves so it falls it falls it falls it is continuously falling towards the earth and going in this circle so it is the gravitational force on the moon which is making it go in a circle you can see this gravitational force is towards center so when something goes in a circle there must be a force towards the center of the circle that's a rule for example you take a stone and whirl it in a horizontal circle the stone is continuously being pulled by the thread towards the center so when something goes in a circle there must be a force towards the center of the circle so it is in fact the gravitational force which is making the moon go in a circular orbit around earth it also makes them sometimes go in elliptical orbits and it is the gravitational force which makes the earth go around the sun this is the idea now let us see something about this universal law of gravitation whenever you have a proportionality constant we can convert it into equality by introducing a constant so you can write f equal to g m1 m2 by d square this is called newton's universal law of gravitation universal because it is applicable for any two objects in the universe not on earth so if you have any two objects of masses m1 and m2 both attract each other okay m1 attracts m2 and m2 also attracts m1 with a force which can be calculated using this formula g m1 m2 by d square g here is called universal gravitational constant universal gravitational constant okay its value is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 and unit how to get its unit force is measured in newtons take d square there d is in meters so newton meter square per kg square because when m comes down it will be kg square so newton meter square per kg square is the unit of gravitational constant so the value of g g is a constant anywhere you go in the universe g value will remain the same so it's called universal gravitational constant constant is something which never changes so this value of g will never change the capital g value will never change so let's see an example on on this suppose i have a 1 kg object i have another 1 kg object separated by 1 meter in space deep in space where there is no other object so these are two objects having mass so this 1 kg attracts the other 1 kg like that this this 1 kg will attract this 1 kg what will be these forces you can calculate by newton's law of gravitation g whose value is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 into m1 which is 1 into another m m2 another mass which is 1 by square of distance which is 1 square so the force will be 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newtons this is a very small force can we write this in terms of decimal point 10 zeros 667 such a small value okay so it's a it's a very small force so you will see these two 1 kg objects moving very slowly in space because of this force so you keep them in space and come back and they'll be moving very slowly of course one day they will come closer closer and closer and one day they will meet but that one day we don't know how much time it will take 
maybe one year or maybe even more i don't know we have to calculate that so the point being any two objects in the universe attract each other okay with a force which is given by this value g into mass of first object into mass of second object by distance between them okay for example suppose let us see earth and i am very close to earth my mass is let us say small m it may be 60 kg earth's mass is capital m and I, from the center of the earth i am at a distance r so you can consider earth as if it is a point at the center you can consider it like that when you have a spherical object you can replace it with a point having same mass at the center so if you want the force of attraction between me and earth okay there is earth i am replacing it with a point and i am here i'll draw it here and the distance between us is r so earth is attracting me i am attracting earth let's calculate this force the force is given by g my mass into earth's mass by radius square so keep my mass aside see this quantity gm by r square g 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 mass of earth is 6 into 10 power 24 this is known 6 into 10 power 24 kg 6 followed by 24 zeros that many kilograms radius of earth is 6 for this many meters so if you calculate this value it comes out to be 9.8 okay my mass is aside the gm by r square value is 9.8 my mass is aside so the force with which earth attracts me is m into 9.8 where m is my mass 9.8 is the value of this g m by r square this value is 9.8 this this is what we call as small g so g capital m by r square is called small g so what is my the force that earth exerts on me g m by r square into my mass small m which is nothing but small g into small m or mg that's what we call it so on what values factors does small g depend on small g depends on mass of earth radius of earth and gravitational constant so small g is property of earth if tomorrow i go to some other planet the small g value will change because mass of planet will change radius of planet will change okay so earth attracts me with a force mg planet may attract with a force mg dash where g dash is the value of uh, acceleration due to gravity for that planet okay this g is called acceleration due to gravity Okay, this is a small g how do you get small g take capital g multiplied by mass of earth divided by radius of earth square if you want small g for sun take g capital g multiply by mass of sun divided by radius of sun square if you want g for small g for a planet let us say jupiter take capital g multiply by mass of jupiter divided by radius of jupiter square that gives you small g on the jupiter okay so this is in a nutshell the the whole concept of the newton's law of gravitation hope you enjoyed this lecture thank you